Celebrities just might be some of the most miserable people on the planet. Oh, I'm always depressed, all the time. I struggle with happiness. I get depressed. I have anxiety, depression. But I feel like the way that I have money kind of took away a lot of my happiness. If I get this, I'll be happy. If I do this, I'll be happy. Well, how could you be sad when all of this opportunities come to you? Which is a question that I was determined to get to the bottom of. So after spending hundreds of hours listening to celebrities and hearing them talk about their lack of happiness, I discovered a pattern that all of them seem to go through leading to inevitable misery. So it usually starts like this. A couple years after achieving their dreams, eventually you'll hear them say things like this. If you have all this stuff, doesn't mean you're happy. You know, I, I can speak for myself. I when you talk about depression and, mm -hmm. and reveal idle thoughts. I've pulled that, that song not only from previous experiences, but I think my whole life. Does money bring happiness to you? No. Oh, I'm always depressed, all the time. I thought that success was all I needed. That's what was gonna bring the happiness. Buying my mom a house, uh, being the fame, the accolades, having people say, yo, you are the best in the game. I thought those would be the things that would bring happiness. And then when those things came, the, the happiness wasn't there. And I, I struggled with happiness. There's times where I feel really happy, but it, at that time, I also know this is temporary. And my focus is finding this, this, this way through. I was thinking about how the way that I was going to die was, I was going to do it. Uh, as a Beatle, we made it, and there was nothing to do. Uh, we had money, we had uh, fame, and there was no joy. So they found that the success that they always thought would make them happy didn't. And if you're like most people, you probably echo the same sentiment as these commenters who said, you know, I'm sure their lives are just so rough and terrible, but somehow I don't have a hard time not feeling bad for them. All I'll say is I sincerely prefer to cry in a mansion than on the street. The biggest trick that the rich has ever done is to convince the rest that being rich is depressing. I'd rather be a depressed billionaire than just depressed. So in other words, people don't believe that their lives are really all that bad and that the money and success didn't make their lives better. And initially, I was inclined to think the same thing until I heard so many celebrities echo what MGK and Kelly Clarkson said here. I mean, it probably would have meant to you like when the world's eyes came on you and people were wondering like, you know, like, well, how could you be sad when all of this opportunities come to you? And, you know, really it's like, I, I, the fact that you're overstimulated, it's like you have so much of this, these, these things, but they, they really don't equal out to emotional support. You know, they're just like mm -hmm. materials they're that- They're fleeting. Yeah, they're, they're fleeting. So, mm -hmm. um, I, and then the following line is, I don't expect you to understand because it's almost like, I think Jim Carrey said it. He was like, I wish everyone in the world could experience what it's like to be rich and famous just so you can realize that it means nothing. Yeah, and, and it's and it yeah. coming from I like if I was my poor kid self would be like, well, try being me, dude, poor. Yo, yo, <laughs> hey, me too. I said the same thing, dude. No, but, me too. But I've been there. That's what I'm saying. Like I've been completely dirt poor, and and I would have made that joke back then. And if the full extent of it was just that these celebrities came to discover that money and success didn't make them happy, then that would be one thing. But unfortunately, they entered into the next stage and soon came to realize that it's far, far worse than that. I want you to listen closely to these next clips to hear why. Is that what I want for myself? Did I get too big? Because I like people. I like entertaining. And the higher up I go, for some reason, the less happy I am. I had bought into the not uncommon notion that when I taste success, when I get over there, then I'll be happy. But the strangest thing happened. As the show got more successful, I got more depressed. But I feel like the way that I have money kind of took away a lot of my happiness. I was a millionaire. I had a beautiful, beautiful women in my life. I had um, cars, a house, an incredible, uh, a solid gold career. And yet on a daily basis, I wanted to commit suicide. Um, when, I, when I was on top of the world, it became more and more and more depressed until it was like, Idle thought. And I know tons of people who I grew up with in the Silicon Valley boom who have hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank account and are as miserable and as lonely and as broken as you'll ever see. I'm doing everything I had dreamt of doing for 30 years. It all came true. And I am 
the least happy I've ever been in my life. So contrary to these commenters that believe that they'd obviously be happier being rich than being poor, these celebrities didn't just find that money and success couldn't make them happier, but instead they found that it made them even more unhappy than they ever were before the money and success. But maybe you're still skeptical and you don't believe them. Well, I didn't either until something finally clicked for me. I finally understood why money and success make you far less happy than you were before. To understand this, think about that thing that in your heart of hearts you say, if I could just get that thing, then I would finally be happy and fulfilled. Now it doesn't have to be money or fame. It could be anything from experiencing personal growth to finding the right spouse or starting a family or moving to another state or whatever. So whatever it is, the only difference between us and these miserable celebrities is that they were unlucky enough to have gotten everything that they've ever dreamed of. And once they did, it ultimately made them even more unhappy because at least when they were dreaming about the future, they had the excitement and the little bit of happiness that came from chasing their dreams. But once they got it, not only did they lose that little bit of excitement and happiness that they got from doing the chasing, but they eventually experienced the consequences of trying to squeeze happiness out of anything finite. I mean, just listen to how Tom Brady puts it. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and and still think there's something greater out there for me. Maybe a lot of people would say, hey man, this is what it is. I reached my goal, my dream, my life is, me, I thank God. It's gotta be more than this. I mean, this isn't, this can't be what it's all cracked up to be. I mean, I've done it, I'm 27. And what else is there for me? So you could think about it this way. When you're incredibly thirsty for a glass of water and you eventually get it, once you drink it, you do feel good, but that fulfillment only lasts until you get thirsty again. Eventually, you find yourself unfulfilled and in need of more. And so if we finally achieve our wildest dreams, it's like drinking the last cup of water on Earth. Just like everything finite, it will eventually be emptied. And once it is, you'll realize what Tom Brady is describing, that it can't offer you anything more. Realizing this is what caused C.S. Lewis to say, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. In other words, these finite things weren't made for us to treat them as if they were infinite. God is the only thing that's infinite. And to continue the water analogy, because God is infinite, there's always more water to draw from. This is why Jesus, who claimed to be God, said that he could give you living water and can offer you water that will never run dry. And what Jesus said there really had me thinking, because just as St. Augustine once said in a prayer, God, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. And so the answer to the problem of celebrity depression is to not look to the finite for which only the infinite can provide. Now that's an answer, but it isn't the full answer because how we think of identity is just as, if not more important than what we talked about here. So go ahead and click on this video to see why as we unpack the story of a 56 year old model who was devastated when men stopped respecting her. I'll see you over there.